As uh, I did tell you guys, you know, the Rogers Park Band guys, they've been very busy. Not just in music, but in getting married. Morty Kurtz got married, uh, uh, not, not probably not two or three months ago. Yosef Payson got married this past uh, Sunday night. I was not available, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for the first time to the program, Morty Kurtz and Yosef Payson. Hi there, Yossi. Good afternoon. Mort, uh, Yosef, is it afternoon for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I'm in New York right now, so that makes it afternoon. Now, Morty, you there too? I'm here, yes. I'm here. Thank there you. There we go. So, I mean, this is like a big thing for you guys, not just, you know, the culmination of, I would say, two to three years of working on an album, but, I mean, you're you're joining like a new brotherhood, you know, a marriage. Baruch Hashem, yes. Thank you. Now, Morty, would you say that um, being part of a duo uh, helped prepare you for marriage in any way? Uh, 130 percent, actually. Uh, it's learning how to how to cope with another person pretty much all the time because uh, as musicians we're we're working a lot together uh, and friends. You know, having somebody always there. So it's been a, and you know different opinions and figuring how to how to compose songs together and work together. I think it's definitely helped. Mm-hmm. Yosef, would you say that uh, the last year and a half of traveling around? U.S. and Canada, we know you spent some time in, in Ottawa, and you've been uh, uh, spending me- many, many hours with Morty. I mean, have you guys got sick of each other, or, or is the bond just getting stronger? It gets better and better, I'll tell you. it's tra- Traveling is a whole other experience, especially when it's traveling for music. Um, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling knowing that I'm going somewhere, and then the day's there, and in that evening, I'll be meeting an audience, meeting a bunch of new people, performing, singing together. And when I'm doing that together again and again with a good friend like Morty, so it, it builds the bond because it's, it's a wonderful experience that, that we're lucky enough to have. So it's, it's, been, it's been great and it gets better. Morty, you feel the same way or not? Uh, well, that would be kind of awkward if I didn't. Yeah. Uh, but no, I definitely definitely feel the same way. And you know, it, it's like it, it wasn't that we were both musicians and we became friends, but it was more that we were friends, so we decided to be musicians together as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually want to go back because that I actually want to go back to that, Morty. I don't know how the two of you met. How how did the two of you meet? We met at a wedding. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> We met actually. We both grew up in Chicago, so we were we were actually um, school buddies in elementary, and then we spent a few years in yeshiva together in in Muncie. Mm-hmm. We went out of town for Masista High School yeshiva, uh, and I was in Muncie, New York, and then we spent some time together in Baltimore. Um, and it was just over the time we actually spent one summer together. We were both home for a summer in Chicago with Ben Azman, and um, we were actually both working together um, as. We were we were working as swim instructors for a local camp at the JCC, mm-hmm. and that is when um, we we spent a lot of time together. Then and actually that summer, it was I think it was right at it was right before that summer where Yosef bought his first guitar, um, and we were we we spent a lot of time playing music over that summer, and from there things slowly built up. So what was it that people were telling you that you have to record stuff, or was it just you guys wanted to do it for yourself, so to speak? Yo, safe. Um, well, we, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yo, safe, you there? But, yeah, Yo, safe. That's right. a good question. You know, there's we've we've been for that. Morty was talking about that summer. That was about eight years ago. When we started playing together. Um, so that was when our, we had our we had our first concert. It was a small, it was like a concert, it was like a Shabbos thing, and. For me, the greatest, what I enjoy most about about our musicianship and is is that is performing and connecting with an audience. For me, that's what I get. The, that's what I. That's the most appealing part of it for me. Um, so from there, we went on to we started playing some concerts. We started traveling, and when we would play concerts, a lot of what we do is we go to smaller communities that don't have such a. Uh, a strong Jewish community in like number wise. So for example, we go to a place like North Carolina or like Lakeland in, in northern Florida or New Mexico, Texas, you know, small places where 
there isn't such strong Jewish presence that you have in big cities like Chicago, Detroit, New York. So we'd play songs, we'd meet people, and they were, people were so interested to see Hasidic Jews that would sing and that would bring everyone, that would all come together and sing Jewish songs and just celebrate our, our, our identity, who we are. And they would say, okay, so you're here and we had a concert, but we want, we want to hear more. So it was kind of, it was through the performing that, that that's what led to the recording. Uh-huh. That people wanted to hear more, they wanted to have it when, when we weren't there, so there's, there's both of those. We enjoy performing, so we write the songs, so we have what, and we write, we perform them. And then that in turn makes you, makes, makes us want to record them. Interesting. Morty, would you think eight years ago yeah. that, that you would rely on this now? Uh, I'm assuming you're going to rely on this for Parnassa right now, the beginning of your marriage, right? Um, here and there. Sure, sure, yeah. So did you think eight years ago that that's how far this would come, this uh, going around from small city uh, to small city? Not one bit, not one bit at all, actually. Um, it was something we did as a hobby, something we enjoyed, and then it kind of just escalated, and, and it kept growing. And I remember there was... I think it was last year, um, took his time when we re- we released our first uh, our first music video. Um, after we, we recorded our second song, mm-hmm. and that was we were like, okay, this this can really be a turning point for us. And and once we released that, we got tons of exposure, and it really kicked off, and things just kept growing. And even even over the summer, just with the success of the album so far, I mean, we um the way we like to work at Rogers Park is that we do everything as if it's our only or our last time to do it. We put everything we have into into one thing, no matter when, where, what it is. And every show we put 100 percent, every song we put 100 uh, percent, every music video. And we made, you know, three or four music videos as if that was going to be our last music video. Right. Um, and and even the album, we made this album, you know, thinking that hey, you know, this can go either way, but we're going to put everything we have into this. Mm-hmm. And with that attitude, as well as you know, with the help from Hashem, obviously, there's we've really we've seen a major turning point over the last six months just where it's really been taking off. Well, I can tell you the fact that, you know, you have uh, organizations such as Salt to Soul, Chaste Zavi, that are interested in bringing you in for a concert alongside 8 Day and Avram Rosenblum. You know, that, that's that got to be, you know, a great pat on the back saying, hey, we must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, you know, the, this opportunity that we have, uh, this coming in a, in a bit over a month, on March 6th, we'll be playing in, um, Brooklyn School of Music with um, with Eighth Day, like you mentioned, Alvin Rosenblum. So this is going to be for us a a big opportunity where it's, we're we're saying that hey, this is really going places. We're really moving. You know, with the album has been put out. We've, we've people have been buying it. People have been you know giving us feedback. And then this is kind of a confirmation saying, you know, says Morty, you guys, I like what you're doing. Something is going right. So I see that as, you know, keep it up. That's, 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 that's what I'm hearing. Now let me ask yeah. you, uh, Morty, because I, I know you're more on the writing side, Morty. Um, how does sure. one go about writing a uh, Rogers Park song? A Rogers Park song, okay. Um, I, look at, I look at writing as uh, there's a few different ways to look at it. Um, you know, for the, the, there's one side where... There's one way of going about it where I'll see something that I'm really inspired by. Um, I'll jot it down on a piece of paper, and then I'll actually pick it, you know, whether it's, it's, it's something I learned uh, in Hasidah, something um, I just learned on the Parsha. Usually it's, usually it's actually Parsha-related, and, and I, 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 um, I blend it with something I learned in Hasidah. I'll write it down. I'll just start jotting it down. I'll think about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it aside for a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it'll happen when I'm just picking up my guitar, and, um, and I'll start... I'll start playing and, I'm, and I decide, okay, I want to I wanna write a new song and I start working with the melody and then I'll pick up that piece of paper again. I'll see that inspiration and put it together with the song and then, you know, then that's the, the birth of the song and then I start forming, you know, the layout and continue the lyrics and everything. Um, that is one way I, I go about it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, there is an inspiration. There's two ways. So the first way is there would be an inspiration where it starts, um, and I'll get about 50% there, and that's where Yosef comes in to kick me in the top of to finish the rest. <laughs> you know, and then um, the other way is, is this is when you know sometimes where a song really comes from a, a deep place of expression. I, I think it's even the subconscious, and when you can really see that Hashem's bracha is really with an artist, 
uh, is when I will have no intention whatsoever <laughs> of writing a song, and then uh, I'll just pick up a guitar, and then something just hits me. And it's uh, I totally think it has nothing to do with the artist. It's just Hashem completely makes the person a Kaylee for whatever needs to be expressed, mm -hmm. and it just comes out. Um, so, you know, uh, can, for can example, you... Kingdom Kid was... Right. King of Kid was a complete, it just came to me in one day. You were in about 20 minutes, I remember that, Morty. Yeah, I was, I, I was, it was in between Shiur and between classes. I was teaching in uh, Wilkes Bay Yeshiva. And, I mean, that song is actually related to the idea of, you know, going through struggles and going through life. Mm -hmm. And I learned something that morning, but it was just, I had no intention of anything. I picked up a guitar, and the song just came to me. Lyrics full, everything. I would, that was, that was, that's something like that. And then, Let's say, for example, the uh, the Holy One or Magid, those are two songs, and or Fisherman, those are even three songs that have that have really taken time to develop. And you know, I started with a few chords here and a few lyrics here, and I decided what I want the song to be about, and really progress over time. You know? No, I think that's a it's a very so unique way. The, uh, it's it's not your average way of working. You know, some composers will say the melody comes first, or or like you said, inspiration comes first. But just to get hit on the head with everything is definitely very deep. Um, at, we saw on your Facebook page, uh, what was it, two or three weeks ago, that uh, new music video coming. What's what's that all about, Yosef? Well, the, the new music video is for the it's for the for, for the title track of our of our album that's out in stores now, the Magid. Um, so there, it's a story. I mean, there's an old there's an old Hasidic story of two Hasidim that wanted to travel to the Rebbe. Mm -hmm. And but there was one of them that his name was Rebarach, and no one would want to take him because every time that they would go track, they'd be on the way. He would stop to daven Shachas for a long, long time, and they would never get to there before before Shabbos. So no one would take him until un, until one one wagon driver who felt bad for him and said, "Look, I'll take you. We're we're going to go. We're going to leave. We're going to leave a couple days before Shabbos." If you tell, if you promise you won't daven for too long in the morning, so we'll get there before Shabbos, I'll, I'll take you. And Rebbe Baruch agrees. And they go on their way, and, and sure enough, comes the first morning, they, they wake up in the inn, and Rebbe Baruch is davening, and davening, and going a long time, and, and the wagon driver is upset, and says, I thought you said you wouldn't daven. So he says, let me tell you like this. He says, wagon driver, you're, you're a businessman, right? He says, how do you own your business? You go and you, you buy, your wares, and you sell them in a fear in a town called Leipzig. Because let me ask you, if you're on, your, on the way to the fair, on the way to Leipzig, and someone says, I'll buy, come, I'll buy everything you have now. You don't even have to go to the market. Would you sell him the merchandise? He says, of course, right? It's about making making the money. Right. So Baruch tells him like this, if we're traveling to the Rebbe to, to gain the inspiration, to, to help our connection with Hashem, then on the way, if I'm davening and I have that connection with Hashem, I'm not going to drop it now and say I need to go to the market. And it's a, that's that's the story behind the song, saying sometimes we're we're traveling, we're looking for you know where are we going to find inspiration, where are we going to find meaning, and sometimes it's right there along the way. So that's that's what the song of the market is about, and and the, the music video will 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 show that's it will kind of be a visual representation of. Of that story. So when do we get to see this video, Morty? Uh, well, we're um, we're looking to you know we finished the filming stage. We're in, we're in post production now. We're looking to have it out in the next three weeks. We're good. Looking forward. We'll uh, we'll definitely keep you guys posted. You know, keep, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and we'll be uh, keeping you updated. Hundred percent. On the phone with me, Morty Kurtz and Yosef Payson of. Rogers Park. We're talking about the release of their debut album. Available in stores now from Adarit Music. Available on mostlymusic.com, iTunes, CD Baby, basically anywhere and everywhere you can get music. Um, one of the, one of the questions I've been getting over the weeks, Morty, was uh, why are they called Rogers Park? <laughs> and when my answer is probably uh -huh. probably because there's a Jewish area or there's an area where Jews live in Chicago called Rogers Park, the answer back the question back is, oh, so if they lived in in uh, Peterson Park, would they have been called West <laughs> West Peterson Park? Yossi, if you look, if you write on Rogers Park in Hebrew, you look at the gematria, it's the same as Mashiach now. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Yossi, now, now it all makes sense. I, I can tell you. So I Peterson can, Park isn't the same thing. 
I can I can set I can tell you still in shame of mode. You're like getting ready to speak every night with your dry towers. Anyway, yeah, don't reveal all of the secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to tell you guys but, that um, the I, Rogers Park website is now up, Morty. Correct? Yes, up and running. RogersParkBand.com. You can see about the Shabbos package, about them to contact them, and of course lyrics, music, and videos. RogersParkBand.com. What were you saying before, Morty? Oh, so I want to add it to for all of our listeners out there to clarify our name, Rogers Park. We've been getting that question probably from the uh, the day that we started the band. Um, but it's actually, it is the neighborhood that we grew up in, um, but we always had a feeling, you know, that we would all go away to different towns for yeshivas um, and for school, but we'd always meet back up, uh, as, you know, as yeshiva students, and, and, and we would always meet back up in Rogers Park, and we would get together and always have a kumzit or a a malka and play music together. Um, and it was a neighborhood that uh, I personally connected with very much uh, growing up, and my whole idea was, there was a certain idea to it where, I wanted to make this, you know, it doesn't sound off the bat as a very Jewish name at all, um, but I wanted to show how you can take, this was something like almost a mission statement of our band, and um, I wanted to put that in the name, how you can take something that may not look um, that Jewish and may not sound that Jewish, but really transform it with how you use it. You know, so just the name of our band itself kind of shows on what we, we stand for in that sense, how we can take a name that doesn't really sound very Jewish, but there happens to, you know, there's, you can turn it either way. There happens to be, it was a Jewish neighborhood, and it still is. And in a sense, using that, you know, something that's very normal and mundane, but using it for the spiritual and using it for Kedusha. Well, I got that. Um, so that was like, there was, I, I remember that when we were, when, when we decided, I had that thought, and I said, you know what, I want to stick to this name, in a sense, to remind myself of that message. To keep something that may sound and, you know, look regular, but really have a, a, a true... Uh, inspiration within and a true meaning behind it. Well, you guys are deeper than I thought. What can I say? <laughs> Morty Yosef, I want to wish both of you Mazel Tov and Much Hatzlacha. Before we let you go, I don't, I, you, you guys can decide between yourself who's going to answer this. I want to play you out with the fisherman. Is there anything specifically you can tell me about uh, creating or recording the fisherman uh, anecdote or something that we can let you go with? Okay, uh, we'll do a... Yeah, sure. Um... Yosef, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the first few lines. Yosef will finish it, finish it up for me. Um, but The Fisherman is actually one of those songs where it did take time to write out, and uh, I decided at one po- point to go through the um, the memoirs of the previous Rebbe, the previous Chabad Rebbe, and uh, he relays different stories of different characters of the old shtetls in, uh, in Russia, and one of them was Avram the Fisherman. Mm-hmm. Uh, very unique very unique story. There's not too much. There's only about a page written about him, but um, I was so inspired from the from the way he went about things. Uh, so, Yosef, you can finish that up. The, in, in the book, the previous Rabbi's memoirs, he's tracing the origins of Hasidism, and essentially it's what he's, he's illustrating characters that the, the principles that Hasidism founded on of simplicity, of sincerity, of honesty, in this one page that his name was Avremel the Lip, because he he was a fisherman from Vitebsk, a town in Ukraine, right? And he wasn't particularly bright or anything, but he was sincere and he was honest. And what's said about him is that on Friday, if there were people in the town that couldn't afford to buy fish for Shabbos, he would give them fish for free and refuse any payment. One time, someone paid him and gave him a small bit too much change. And a rebel, the fisherman, he went traveling from town to town to find this person to give him back, meaning that he exemplified these traits to a fault, you could say, meaning so sincere, so honest. And you look at the words that, the, the part of the chorus, I'm just a simple man bringing heaven in. That's, that's the, that's the whole, that's what, that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. That each and every one of us that, we may not think that we could be so powerful or making such an impact. Simply by sincerely serving Hashem, we have such power to impact the world. That's, that's, that's where the song comes from. Well, that's a great song and a great message. Yosef Morty again. Uh, Yosef, Mazel tov to you, Morty. Uh, I guess 
post Mazel Tov to you. I want to wish you guys yeah, a Shlucha Rabba, and I, I hope to see many great things from you. If I don't see you before uh, March 6th, I guess I'll see you March 6th. See you there, yeah, sure, yeah. then. Great. There Thank you go. You. Ladies and gentlemen, Rogers Thank Park. You. Off their debut album, here is the song entitled The Fisherman. The album's called The Magid. They're Rogers Park, and you're tuned in to the Zero Port Live Launch on the Nachum Signal Network. If you wait right here 